Welcome to the Wayback Machine. So today we're going to do a one-year flashback. It's been a year on the mic. For those who haven't gone back and listened to some of my origin story, let me celebrate the passing of spending the last year on this microphone and sharing knowledge and information and so many amazing stories with you across this past year by resharing episode one, an introduction to Tracy Brinkman. Enjoy. Wait, did he just say the police kicked in his door and raided his place? Who is this guy, Tracy Brinkman? And why should I listen to him? Well, you're going to have to listen to find out. Okay, here's the question. How are we dark horses? You know, the ones everyone is betting against. The ones they don't expect to win, place, or even show on the track. And they'll even laugh on us when we talk about trying. How do we show the world our greatness and triumph? Come on. Well, that's the question, and this podcast will give you the answers. This is The Dark Horse Entrepreneur. My name is Tracy Brinkman. And push it out. Welcome, fellow Dark Horses, to the launch of what I think you're going to find is a very motivational, I hope it's motivational, and educational podcast on the amazing journey of being, becoming, or retaking that entrepreneur that burns inside you. See, I've been a hustler, and I use that in the best term, since I was a youngster. And, you know, we're, doing, we're talking about doing things from trading drawings for goodies in grade school to painting and pinstriping and doing lettering uh, on cars in high school, installing stereo systems in high school, as well as, well, you'll find out more as I share my journey. And along with that, all the roller coasters of ups and downs that, that came with it. Now, I say roller coaster because, you know, roller coasters are a great pastime of mine and in many ways a great analogy for my life. And perhaps you can relate to this as well. I mean, how often do you spend lots and lots of time, perhaps hours more than you'd like, waiting for that moment just to get on the ride? And then it finally comes. You get on, that bar clanks down onto your lap, that slow climb to the top. You know, you're looking down, oh, you feel that, that cheer in your tummy, the excitement builds, and then whoosh, it all begins, right? That first fall, those right turns, those left turns, the screams, the climbs up again, and perhaps a few dramatic pauses in the action, you know, just long enough for you to catch your breath, and then whoosh, it starts all again, right? More light turns, a dark tunnel, right? What's going on? I can't see anything, and then screech, bam, it's over. For a little while, your heart keeps racing, doesn't it, right? Your legs are a little shaky. You want to get off the right. Man, that wasn't nothing, right? You turn to your friend, your loved one, whoever you may be with, and you're excitedly sharing what you just experienced, whether it's good or bad, and then you leave. Perhaps you're wanting more. Perhaps you never want to do that ever again. Yeah, well, my life's been a lot like that. Yours? Yeah, I'm sure it has. Well, welcome to what, you know, that roller coaster that they call life. And trust me, as I as I share this with you, I'm far from complaining because at the end of the day, I love my life now. And there have been many times when I could not say that. Even after all the, the climbs and the falls and the dips and the turns and the dark tunnels and the wave causing splashes, in the end, it's made me who I am today. And who am I? Well, I'm Tracy Breedman, a fellow dark horse. And let me start off by saying, I'm not going to try to spin some sob story of being the product of an underprivileged household or abusive parents, because really, I was neither. Now, while I did experience some abuse in my early years, it was not at the hands of the people I grew up calling mom and dad. And while we were not rich by any means, uh, you know, I didn't live in squalor. You know, if I needed something, it was there. If I wanted something, well, I didn't always get it, right? Well, that's cool. Um, I didn't grow up with too many brothers or sisters. And actually, I was an only child. I'll take that one step further. I was adopted, so I grew up knowing I was wanted, or knowing I was wanted. Yeah, that's good speaking, right? Um, because my parents, they picked me. Now, my father, uh, he served in the United States Army the bulk of my childhood, so I grew up all over the United States and even spent a number of years in my youth uh, in Germany. 
So I can't say I grew up with a narrow focus of the types of people or cultures in our world. I came to know and respect many races and religions and even personality types. See, did I have any scars growing up? Hell yeah, I had scars, but I can't honestly say that those scars were so deep that they weren't me calling them out as the cause of my later issues. Now, I'm not a psychologist, so perhaps I'm wrong here, but only time and perhaps some uh, additional self-reflection will reveal that one. You see, to me, well, maybe and so many others, perhaps even you, I gained a pretty damn well-rounded and diverse set of experiences growing up, yet I still made some flippin' poor choices in late childhood, going into my early adulthood, heck, I'll even admit I made some bad choices going into later adulthood, causing more roller coasters, dips, turns, dark tunnels. See, these choices at one point put me in a place I, I never imagined I'd be. I truly experienced some dark times in my life. Now, my perception of a dark time may be different than yours, but for me, these were times where I thought I wasn't going to see too many more years. Heck, I didn't think I was going to see too many more weeks. Uh, times when I thought the whole world was set out against me. You know, that, that dark horse feeling where the odds are stacked against you, right? Times when I felt like nothing I was doing was going to pull me out of the seemingly bottomless pit, that dark tunnel on that roller coaster ride that I was falling into. Until finally it came to, it came to me getting focused on who I was and what I wanted, right? I was so busy do, being what everyone else wanted me to be. I had to stop letting the tracks of someone else's roller coaster design take me down yet another dark filled tunnel. Uh, you know, that, that dark tunnel filled with screams of fear versus the screams of joy that we'd all prefer. You with me so far? All right. Okay. So let me give you an example. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to have vision, if you will, returning home from a, a night's worth of partying. Uh, and now, if I'm really being honest, it was a couple of days worth. And anyway, imagine getting home, opening the front door of your condo and finding it ransacked. Yeah, let that sink in for a moment. Now, let me, let me take it one step further. And then you come to a realization that it wasn't thieves that ransacked your place. It was the police. Yeah, that's right. 5-0 literally came in and raided my place. See, <laughs> when I say raided, I mean it was much like you see in all those movies where they toss everything's on the floor, the couch is upside down, boxes of cereal have been dumped on the counter, the whole nine yards. Yeah, welcome to that very dark tunnel of my roller coaster of life. Yeah, now don't get it twisted. I'm not sitting here on this mic and trying to blame anyone else but me. Huh. Because it was, it was the choices that I made, the choices in friends, the choices in lifestyles, the choices in mates, right? That were really coming to a head at this moment. Right? I was about to lose everything I had, perhaps even my first child. And, huh, if I didn't make, unless I made new choices. So here's the question I'm going to have to ask you. Have you ever been faced with that? Yeah. I think we've all had that, right? If you've ever been faced with losing anything or losing everything that you've built or loved, you know what I say when I mean it was time to make a bloody radical change in my life. So it was after a day like that that I literally I, I made a mental go goal to uh, to clean up my uh to clean up my lack my act clean up my life and really clean up my body right because obviously I was doing a lot of things tossing a lot of poison in there that I need to to get fixed I was determined not to fall any further into that that bottomless pit I've had enough of this dark tunnel that I was traveling in really you get me all right so it was time to start uh I'll say searching for a better way right because really I was battered but not broken all right. I needed to pull and I wanted to pull myself up out of that pit and, and literally sail to new heights. Right. Uh, a song pops in my mind, but I, I won't I won't hurt your ears by singing. Right. So thanks to the help of uh, my parents and some very close friends. Thank you, Cheryl and Robbie. Right. I literally began a new life, literally one of the ones that was going to set me upon a path of 
discovery and, and self-improvement I come to learn was the uh, tag name for it later. Uh, at this point, it was just like I needed better ideas. Uh, so over the course of the next couple of years, I started to literally, I went back and worked in retail and in a warehouse and I did temporary jobs just to pay the bills. And I think the bigger thing here was to build my self-esteem back to where it should be. You see, at this point, I didn't believe I was worthy of a job that fit the real skills I had at that time. And because, and I say that because only a couple of years prior, I was doing computer programming and consulting in my own little business. And I was doing this consulting for PPOs of insurance companies in Southern California. And ladies and gentlemen, this was before the dot com boom. Anyway. Uh, I digress. We'll, we'll share more of this as we go along. So then I set another mental goal that I was going to land a good paying job so I could get back out on my own and raise that beautiful girl in a healthy and happy home of our own. You know, sometimes I pause and I wonder if it wasn't for her, would have I made different choices? And I bow my head and really I, I take a moment and I thank the heavens that I had that little girl, Talia, in my life. Because, you know, this is the who. This is the who I mentioned earlier, right? Who I was. I identified as her father. And that who helped me make those choices, right? See, I, you can see I had tough choices. There were tough choices that had to be made. Did I want to keep the fun and the thrills of the dark side? Hmm? <sighs> a little, sorry, a little Darth Vader there for you. Or did I want to become truly successful and happy. I mean, getting things, uh, you know, fast money is easy, but I wanted the things that money can't buy, right? I had to break away from the places, the habits, and yeah, even the people that it aided in some ways urged what I'll call my downfall. And again, here's what I'm saying. Let's be honest. Nobody made me do any of those things. Right? I drank that booze myself, right? I took those drugs myself. I sold them myself. I got others to do the same. I parted too hard myself. And those were my choices. Right? Now, I was making a new, improved choice. And again, I succeeded, right? I began working for a Fortune 10 company, climbed the ranks in that organization. In addition, I was blessed with a second child. And here comes yet another more exciting roller coaster. Yeah. See, she was born with a distended abdomen and in need of a liver and small bowel transplant. Krista underwent six different surgeries by the time she was three months old. I don't even know how they can operate on bodies that are that small. Six times in three, and before she's three months old. See, and they were doing this all in an effort to give her enough intestinal tract to absorb life, the life saving, the life sustaining nutrients that you and I just take for granted by simply eating. All right? She just, she, I, if I remember correctly, she had like 23 centimeters of abdomen when usually we're born with like 230. So she wasn't being able to uh, sustain life. So they actually had to surgically implant, implant this uh, uh, TPN line that went in right above her heart and was feeding her the nutrients that were keeping her alive. Um, because she wasn't processing nutrients naturally, her liver was shutting down. All right. So this, it was just a, this ongoing snowballing downward spiral for this poor, beautiful, blue eyed, blonde baby girl. Well, Finally, the doctors got her stabilized and placed her on that waiting list for those much needed organs, right? And at this point, all you can do is wait and watch and hope. And during this time, I really love, I, I learned about my passion for public speaking. Uh, because let me tell you, anyone who's willing to listen to my pitch about people becoming an organ donor, yeah, they heard from Tracy Brinkman. Breakfast meetings. Clubs, rotaries, radio, TV, everyone, ladies and gentlemen, I was talking to them. Um, I would go to church groups and speak on the topic. Now, I've had a number of people come in and out of my life. I have yet to dislike anyone enough to wish the pain on them that was about to smack me right in the heart. No parent should ever have to watch their child suffer, let alone die in their arms. It's a memory that burns deep into your heart and soul. 
Some may or may not understand this, but I feel lucky to have known Kristen in the first place. You see, she taught me so much about appreciating the things in life, the little things, the big things, and the important things. Lucky enough to have had, been able there to hold her and rock her to sleep and tell her how much I love her and share all the things she had taught me as I rocked her to sleep one last time. So here comes another dark tunnel, all right? An upside down twist in that roller coaster of life. Even with this pain, <laughs> a pain again I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy, still searing in my heart. I still had another little girl to look up to, and a little girl that was looking up to me with those big, beautiful eyes. And what was she looking for? Hope. And again, I was blessed, for without her, would I have I made different choices? Eh, perhaps. At this point, threw myself back into work and into personal development. And as a result of really applying both of those, I saw about four promotions within five years, and next thing you know, I was managing a team in control of millions of dollars of marketing inventory for the uh, for Coca-Cola North America. See, the way I was able to accomplish this was through an ongoing process of goal setting, self-improvement, mind state management, learning my business, having mentors, and on and on. See, that, ladies and gentlemen, is what we're going to be driving here at the Dark Horse Entrepreneur. Because here's the deal. That wasn't the last deep, dark tunnel that came screaming into my life. Nah, no, not quite. They kept coming until, until I owned it all, right? See, until I took responsibility for everything and started making better choices that brought me to where I am today. Sitting at this microphone, talking to you sharing with you, hopefully teaching you with you, or teaching to you, right? Um, and finally, learning with you. See, I, I'm still on my journey. I may be years behind you, and I'm looking to you for renewed inspiration. Cool, let's jam together. We could run our races, right? I may be just a few days ahead of you. Cool, I'm happy to share with you what I know and what I've learned. Uh, years ago, what I learned last year, what I learned last month, hell, what I learned yesterday on a call with my mentor, right? Hopefully I can help you avoid even one of your dark tunnels. And then look, here's the other thing. I'm not so arrogant to think I, that I know it all. I don't. I'm not that arrogant. I've learned so much from former mentors and current mentors over the years uh, of my life that I continue to do just that. I keep learning because what I don't know I will get thought leaders on this show and I'll let them speak their experience to you. I'm here to learn with you, right? So please reach out and let anyone know uh, what tips. Let, let me, let me back up. Reach out and let me know what tips, what tricks, and what tactics are you looking for? And if I don't have that expertise, I'll, I'll sit down here and bang out some research. I'll find someone who does. And guess what? We both win in the process. So, look, I could babble on here for a couple hours about the roller coasters and everything that's gone on in my life. And, and just about uh, the fun of the roller coasters as well. And, uh, and how I get to share them uh, with the woman in my life that makes me proud to be the man I am today. I love you, Diane. But I will save some of these other stories for other episodes. Uh, speaking, in, uh, speaking of other episodes... In the next episode, I'm going to be speaking to the author of The Side Hustle Millionaire and asking the questions, why in the hell did you leave that job? Dude, you were earning over six figures. You want to learn why? Well, you're going to have to check that out on the next, on the next episode of The Dark Horse Entrepreneur. Till then, think successfully and take action. Thank you for listening to The Dark Horse Entrepreneur Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Check us out at www.darkhorseschooling.com. All right. My name is Tracy Brinkman.